Hello, so in this video I'm going to just talk about whether Britain in 2022 and the past few years has been as unstable as the Republic 1649 to 60 and also whether historical parallels are useful, why they might be useful and why they might not be useful. So talking through these periods and just thinking about it for a second with the timelines here, going back to 2015 and even we could go back further than that with something like the Scottish referendum in 2014 but going back to 2015 it's really clear that from that point there has been a great deal of political instability i'm not going to read through all of these but pretty much from the from the brexit vote in 2016 Cameron resigning, then you've got the hung parliament in 27, and Theresa May become prime minister, then you've got the hung parliament in 2017, and this, this deal with DUP, 2019, Theresa May resigns, Boris Johnson becomes prime minister, Conservatives win a general election there, then we had COVID, COVID lockdown 2020, Johnson resigning 2022, Liz Truss becoming Prime Minister, and then 2022, so much has happened since then. We've had the death of Queen Elizabeth II, Charles III becoming King, Liz Truss resigning, and now Rishi Sunak becoming Prime Minister. So a huge amount of political instability from 2015 um, onwards, really. And some people, it might just be the people that I follow on Twitter, but there has been some, you know, some people making comparisons between kind of Liz Truss and Richard Cromwell. Even some people saying, does anybody have, have the address for a for a uh, Dutch statesman to come and take over and, and resolve all these problems, you know, linking obviously to William the Third. Um, but if we look at the Republic, this was also a time of great great instability so we've obviously had the civil wars before in 42 to 46 and 48 49 in 48 we have pride's purge where the military basically it's a military coup basically where military go to parliament and remove all the moderates leave uh, a rump parliament as it becomes known as for the trial and the execution of charles the first so there's only this rump this remaining uh few in parliament who are uh, willing to kind of go ahead with the trial and execution um, of the monarch. And in 1649, early 1649, we have the execution of Charles I, we have the abolition of the lords and the monarchy. So this leaves this power vacuum where we've basically got Oliver Cromwell and the rump parliament and the army as well, of course, very important, um, ruling the country. In 1653, Cromwell dissolves the rump and we have the nominated assembly, which fails pretty quickly um it's very very divided then we have another attempt at a kind of political settlement with the first protectorate parliament we have other protectorate parliaments in 56 and 59 in 55 to 57 as a result of a kind of royalist uprising we have the rule of the major generals then in 1657 we have another attempt at a political settlement with the humble petition and advice where cromwell is is installed as the lord protector and that role becomes hereditary so it looks like things might be resolving, but then the next year Oliver Cromwell dies and Richard Cromwell becomes Lord Protector. He doesn't last very long because he doesn't have support of the army. He resigns in 1659 and then we get the return of the Rump Parliament. Then the following year in 1660, we have General Monk's intervention and the restoration of Charles II. So I went through that really quick, but what we can see in both periods is a huge amount of political instability changes of government um and and this this issue of legitimacy i think is really important in both periods so arguments for that 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 things are similar now to the way they were in the time of the republic so we've had regular changes of government as i said political instability inability to pass legis legislation and command support of the public and parliament and a really key similarity i think is this question over legitimacy that for both liz truss and now rishi sunak both of them have been elected by either conservative party members in the case of liz truss or conservative party mps and so there is questions over how legitimate is that do they have you know do they have legitimacy in the same way that people in the republic questioned whether the rule of the major generals had legitimacy, the nominated assembly had legitimacy, the republic at all had legitimacy because of kind of pride's purge. Um, so I think that is the really big parallel we can draw. On the other hand, there are significant uh, differences really 
between the Republic and, and today. There hasn't been a kind of huge constitutional structural change to government as there was in the Republic. As we just saw from the timeline, there was different types of parliaments. The abolition of the monarchy, the abolition of the lords, leaving this massive power vacuum. The structure of government has remained the same from 2015. We haven't had you know, the abolition of the House of Lords or cha even a change to the kind of voting system. We haven't had that. So we still have the same structure of government throughout this period. Also, the military hasn't been involved in the 21st century like it was in the 17th century. Um, Cromwell relied on the military for his his legitimacy. He relied on the military to keep control. And this links to the, to the last point here, that there hasn't been any armed uprisings or rebellions in you know in the recent times um and if you think about um that that shows that the the military you know the military aren't used in that way in a kind of domestic sense as they were in the 17th century um so how useful are historical parallels well it's it's a bit of fun isn't it going back and looking at things that that have similarities but i am very wary of saying that we can kind of predict the future by looking at history because things are quite different in the 17th century the vast majority of people couldn't vote and if we, you know obviously we had the levelers and and other groups calling for more people having the vote in the 17th century but we don't have the same kind of voting system today as there was then um the media is much different to to the way it was then um political parties are much different mu much more different uh, to the way they were then. There wasn't parties really at this point in the time of the Republic. There was obviously factions and different groups, but it was quite it was quite different. So I think that it's quite interesting. It's quite fun to talk about how, you know, the instability and how similar it might be, but I don't think we can necessarily predict what's going to happen next by looking at the Republic, um, you know, saying, oh, such and such a body is, is like, like, is Rishi Sunak Charles II or is somebody else going to be Charles II to kind of come in and restore restore order? I don't think we can make that kind of parallel. Anyway, I hope that was interesting for you and a bit of fun. Um, and if you've got any thoughts on this, do you think this is a reasonable parallel to make? Do you think this is a load of rubbish and we shouldn't make historical parallels? Or do you think there might be other periods that are better parallels to make between now and... Um, times in the past. Please let me know in the comments. Thank you for listening.